Hello and a warm welcome to the improveyourpool.com World 8 Ball Pool Championships. We're coming to you from Blackpool and we're at the quarterfinal stages, the closing stages of the quarterfinals. With me today is Mick Delahunte, a former captain of, of Australia. Um, what about the standard at the moment, Mick, compared to when you were playing at the height of your game? How good is it at the moment here in 2006? Well, the players here are fantastic, Jonathan. They're just the uh, best in the world, aren't they? That's how good they are. I don't think it's changed much over the years, except that the volume of them is huge amount of good players. These we days. did have an Aussie in the quarterfinals, Ben Noonan, but he didn't make it through. Um, how is the Aussie game at the moment? Yeah, well, first and foremost, Ben, I thought Ben played pretty well. I thought Mark Selby, he, he played against, was fantastic. Ben missed maybe one or two opportunities. He played pretty well. Standard of our game in Australia is, well, it's great. You know, Ben's an exceptionally good player. We have a number of others and they're just as good, but you know, we've got a lot of options in Australia, nice weather, you know, a lot of other things to do, that's it. Well, of course, Quinton Hahn has gone all the way and won the World Championships. Let's take a look at 2006's quarter-final draw, though, and those who are trying to win the championship this time. Mark Selby going through on the man we just mentioned, Ben Noonan of Australia, 9-4. Chris Melling squeaking through on Mick Hill, 9-8. Carl Morris in a very intriguing matchup with uh, the snooker player Tom Ford, 9-7 in that one. But I think the one that everybody in 8-ball pool has been waiting to watch is Jason Twist, seeded 2 a two-time world champion against Darren Appleton, seeded sixth. That's the match we're about to see. And Mick, again, uh, mouth-watering prospect, two guys who know each other's game very, very well and at the top of their game, and they both want to win, don't they? Yeah, great players, both of them. Jason, a, a former winner a couple of times. So I've known him since 1992 when he first came out to Australia, and some of the shots he showed us then were just unbelievable. Darren has been runner-up here, I think, before, and... Yeah. Uh, He'll be very, very hungry, so this should be a fantastic match. I was looking through the pages and I couldn't believe that over the years, Darren Appleton has not yet won the World Championship. Yeah, he's been close a few times, <laughs> but uh, uh, look, I'm sure he'll win one before he's finished. He's, he's a little bit, just a little bit younger than a couple of these guys, and I'm sure he'll be really frothing at the bit to try and get it today. OK, let's take a closer look at the two men coming up in action in our last quarterfinal. Starting with Jason Twist, this is his route to the quarterfinal. Seeded two, remember. He got a bye and uh, also had some, well, pretty convincing victories, really. OK, 8-6 a little bit closer against Liam Farrell. But uh, again, Jason Twist had a quick chat with him beforehand, uh, definitely looking at the, as though he can go all the way this year. Yeah, well, he's just so solid. He just does everything right. Nothing seems to fluster him too much. And yeah, we can talk about all the others, but, gee, it's going to be hard to beat. OK, let's turn our attention to the other man, of course, Darren Appleton from Yorkshire, just across the way. So Blackpool not too far to come for him. And as I said, he's seen this and been here all before. Hitting Patel, he beat 8-3, eight 8-4 eight against Patrice, uh, Patrice Selin. So again, a good run for Darren. He is also psyched up for this one. I'll leave the last word, the tough question. Mate, who's going to win this one? Oh, look, uh, <laughs> either one of them can win it. I, I, Darren is just spectacular when he's going. I think he probably has a little bit more brilliance, but Jason's very steady. You want to pick... Uh, I might just go for Darren because I reckon he just might really want it that fraction more, but geez, very close. Could be anybody. Well, let's turn to the, our other experts, of course, our commentary team, who today are Sean Baker, Lee Kendall and Jim Weish. But first of all, it's Scott and Dave. Ladies and gents, it is time now to start the pool action today. Please welcome on first. Runner up in 2004. He's hoping 2006 will be his big year to blow the opposition away. From West Yorkshire, please, a big round of applause for Darren Dynamite Appleton! <laughs> in the sport of pool. Hails all the way from Ilfracu, twice semi-finalist on the bounce. Please welcome to the table, the Tornado, Jason Twist. <laughs> Another fantastic quarterfinal clash presented here. Former two-time champion, the Tornado, Jason Twist on the left, and Darren Appleton, the all-important lag. They'll be trying to get that cue ball as close to that right-hand cushion as possible, and you can Jason see Twist conceded. Well, that would have been tough to beat anyway. Jason Twist looks like he's won the lag, 
It's a race to nine, best of 17. And the tornado will be initiating things with the first break. And the break, a formidable weapon. We've talked about it. It's like having a big serve in tennis, a long drive in golf. If you're clicking on all cylinders, it can be the difference between winning and losing. First frame, Jason, twist to break. So Jason, to kick things off here against Darren Appleton, this is going to be a great match. And Sean Baker, the chairman of the English Pool Referees Association, as Open always, table. sat to my right. Sean, I know this is going to be, uh, this is one you were talking about for a while. Yeah, I think this is the match I've been looking forward to. Um, Jason Twist, two-time world champion. I think Darren also is probably the finest player in eight ball, never to have won this world title, and he's looking to change that this year. Another man very familiar with the surroundings out there at the business end of this particular tournament as we once again see seconds. Jason's break unsuccessful this time, so he'll mark that into his memory banks and try and change it. But I was just on the verge of introducing our other commentator here today. He's the England team captain, Lee Kendall. And Lee, I'm going to put it Great on you right play. away. I don't, know, I don't want you to just tell me who's going to win this. I want you to predict the score. Right, thanks very much, Jim. Yes, it's going to be a close match. I predict Appleton will probably get an, a 9-6 victory. There you go, 9-6 to the man on your screen now. Bold prediction from someone who knows these two players very, very well. How does your record fare against these two, Lee? Well, um, they're both uh, higher ranked than me, so they've obviously done better on the circuit than me over the last few years, but uh, you know every time you play seconds. these two players, you are really under the, under the cosh. You did nice to avoid that question. It's the best way. They normally beat me, Jim. <laughs> I was just going to say that. I think you've seen you on the receiving end once or twice, Lee, out there, these two guys. But uh, it's, hey, it's got a, all the lookings of a fascinating match. This, you say, I, I, I agree with you, Lee. It's going to be uh, close. And uh, I'd probably go with your prediction. I think Appleton will shade it by one, maybe two frames. Yes, but may no, make no mistake, eh, Sean Lee is a champion. No doubt about that. Oh, without doubt. I mean, top of the game for a long time. And right England now, captain for I can't remember what what year actually did you become England captain? It seems like you've been captain forever. 1998. But we've got Darren Appleton here off to a good start. On the Red Bulls, looking very composed. And just the sort of start that Darren would have been looking for. He knows that Jason's got a terrific record in this event. Yeah, and he wants this tournament as much as any player in the tournament, Jim. He's a a great player, won more tournaments than anybody else in the game, and it would be just if he was to go on and take this title. Now, Lee, let me ask you a question. In present company excluded, could Darren be viewed as the best player never to have won the world at this stage? Well, he'd be, he'd be, he'd be mentioned, and that's what you'd like to say. Um, Keith Brew would be another one, but he was more so under the old EPA rules. But, I mean, this, this guy is just phenomenal. He just wins tournament after tournament. And I was in the States with him not long ago, and he, he went and won an American tournament, American 8-ball, so he can adapt to whichever condition he needs to. He looks very focused too, doesn't he, Sean? Yeah, I was having a little chat with him uh, in the practice room before the match, and he was very relaxed. He said he actually feels far better than he did in 2004 when he made the final. Um, he said he's feeling a lot more relaxed and uh, just going to try and go out and enjoy it and uh, he hopes seconds. he can go one better than he did in 2004. Yeah, the only thing that could go against Darren is he might want to win the title too much and just instead of letting his ability do the work. I think that's what happened in 2004, Lee, as you say. He was uh, up Get against Mikkel in, in that final <coughs> and was well up. 5-1 um, up, 7-2, 9-6. And he's going to miss that shot, so as we were just talking about, just a little bit of early nerves, I think. It's always about settling in and nerves play a major role at any stage. You get to the quarterfinals of the biggest event on the planet. And now it's down to twist to make him remember that miss. And you can't see there's any problems here for him. There's uh, no ball on the rail, everything in the open. So this is a big opportunity for twist to try and uh, put his seed in. He is the highest seed in this match and put his authority on the match. Yes, he came into this as the second seed, and in fairness, is would have been the number one seed 
other than the fact that Gareth Potts, being the defending champion, assumed that role. Yeah, he is a world number one, so on paper, you'd say he was favourite, but on tournaments, you could hardly go against Appleton. I always enjoy watching Jason because he's uh, very methodical. I mean, he never, well, hardly any of the players show too much in the way of excitement, you know, leaving Chris Melling out of that equation. But, uh, you know, Jason bidding along with Chris Melling, the only player ever to win three world titles, that's what they're looking to become. And Melling is already through to the semifinals. Yeah, it's just dislodged the yellow off the rail there. Looks to be in good position. He's got the choice of either the yellows. He can either go top right or into the middle. And he's just, he's just waving around by the white ball, the yellow ball there. So An unpaid guest. Yeah, so just a choice now, isn't it, Jim, which way to go? Both players very, very sound tactically. If it, if it does turn into a bit of a chess match out there, they can play that game too. Yeah, I, I would say that Darren's got the slight edge because Jason likes to go a little bit more for his finishes. But like you say, Jim, whichever aspect of the game, these are two world-class players. Yeah, I think if this was to develop into a tactical battle, I think I'd... I mean, I've already backed Appleton anyway. I think I would definitely be backing, backing Appleton then. He's probably the one of the few players you could put a situation on a table. No matter how bad that situation is, he always seems to pull out a shot that wins him the frame. Big shot here now. Winner or a loser, and it's going to be a loser unless. Oh my word! He's fluked it. And you saw the little apology from there, from Jason there. Yeah, little consolation, Lee. Yeah, little head Look shake. At Darren. Boy, oh boy. That one cut deep. Eight down, and Jason Twist by virtue Frank, of Twist. a fluke takes the opening frame here in the race to nine. And Darren Appleton, that look says it all. 1-0, twist over Appleton. Frame number two, Darren Appleton. The first order of the day is to erase the memory of how he dropped the opener. And he readies himself to break off in frame two. Oh, he didn't get a good split there at all. Well, I'm not sure whether that Up was the wrap or whether it was the break shot, Lee, there. Well, I'd like to see how many balls at the cushion. I think if, if it was four, it was only just four. Well, let's watch it. One, two, three, four. Well, if you include that red as a prior, you hit it dead on, Lee, just four. And do, is that... To, to make it a legal break, four balls have to contact the yeah. cushion? Yeah, Sean was probably yeah. best for that answer. Yeah, for a legal Open break table. shot, you must either make four object balls strike a cushion or pocket a ball. And if you don't, then the ball gets the balls get re-racked and the opponent comes to the visit with two, comes to the table with two visits. Interesting, you just educated me. Yeah, and, and I think also because he's still worried about what's happened in the last frame, he hasn't thought about the break, he hasn't cued the ball properly, and he's, it, it may not be because the referee's racked him wrong, I think it's just because Dan didn't cue it properly. And again, he's, he is unsettled, very Open unsettled. <laughs> just not look quite at, sure what's happening with him out look there. Look at the colours, though. In fairness, he's missed, but even Jason comes out of his chair, you know, with uh, a shrug. I mean, look, at it's almost like they haven't broken. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's a tricky uh, choice of colour which to go, reds or yellows here, Jim, because it, there's no outs, so um, there'll be a case of getting on a suit and trying to promote another ball towards the pocket. I just wonder if Jason might try and take that yellow he's closest to into the bottom right and try and run into those balls he's sailing and just develop some out. That's the only sort of shot he's got really here. He's looking at trying to develop. It's just a question if he, if he can get over there, though, Sean, because if you can't break those yellows out, there's no point potting the yellow. Open table. Yeah, I think he played the, the, the combination there, but I don't think there was any great conviction and he didn't want to open the other balls up. Now this is going to be a tactical battle. The balls are going to dictate how this frame is going to unfold. And I think this will help Darren because now he's got time to settle. He's made a couple of mistakes and now he can just like, pot a ball, cover the pocket and try and get himself into this match. Yeah, fair point, Lee. 
Makes a lot of sense. I mean, Darren right now out. can use that time. So he'll probably put the red over the pocket here. He would like it over to the left-hand side of the pocket so he can't just roll it in, just so he can just own the pocket without giving Jason a chance to just roll it in and give him two visits back. Yellow ball's in play. That's what he's done, he's put it over to the left-hand side, so if Jason does pot his ball, he's going to leave him a, an opportunity to develop the rest of the balls. From a psychological standpoint, when you end up getting a frame like this, and, and obviously this one is not going to be over too soon, how damaging can it be? Well, if there's another mistake made, Jim, then uh, it can be very damaging. I mean, Darren will think to himself, well, I'm a better tactical player, so this has probably worked to my favour here because I can get myself settled into the match. I mean, if Jason was to take a tactical frame as well, I, it could be a little bit of trouble for Darren. Yeah, Jason's... Uh he is a tactical player, but he's, a, he's an attacking tactical player. When uh, he gets in situations like that, he will try and develop balls, won't he, Lee? He will try and get balls out. He won't, he won't play defensive. You see a lot of players play defensive. Yeah, we used to call it like open fudging under the old rules, where you, you, you'd put a ball over the pocket and then develop all the others so your opponent can't go, and that's the way uh, Jason will try and play this. He won't want to get bogged down. Now, neither one of the players have gone back to their chairs. They know that the... You know, no one's going to be taking control of this frame. Yeah, they just tiptoe him back, knowing that there's no point sitting down because there won't be any more than one shot played. Well, either that, Lee, or they just got their pants pressed. 30 seconds. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to wear themselves out of their feet in, in this frame. So just a containing safety from Jason here. Clipping off the edge of the yellow and going back onto the red. It's a good shot. This is one of those frames for the pool purists out there. Well, how the balls are positioned, it's up to Darren to try and promote his balls now. All Jason's trying to do is just to block Darren. If he can get another red over to the right-hand side pocket, then he can open the rest of the balls up, Darren can, and go game. So Jason will try and stop him doing that. And if he can tie a few more reds in, he'll just drop the red in over the pocket. Yeah, it's like he's playing that tactical foul, foul that you suggested early on. That uh, he wouldn't want to. Yeah, that's because he hasn't opened all the reds up, Sean. Because all the reds are round by the yellows, there's no clear visit. That's why he's done it. Now, Lee, I know in snooker, if uh, if the situation doesn't mature and, and players keep coming to the table, the referee will offer a re-rack. Does that ever happen in pool? Uh, sometimes on a TV match they'll do it, but um, in a normal game off TV, no, you, you just carry on playing. I mean, in both, but similar, both players would have seconds. to agree to it. Correct. In fact, under the rules, the only way it can happen if both players play into space three times. And um, we had a famous incident uh, a couple of years ago, Jason Twist playing Carl Morris. And I think it was in the quarterfinals, and basically the situation was that it was a red and a yellow were covering the black over a corner pocket, and neither of them wanted to play their own ball for the fear of knocking the black in. Yeah. So they actually played into space three times, and the frame was re-wrapped. Fascinating. Well, I can tell you that the situation here has just changed drastically. If this red that Darren Appleton is looking at passes Lee, he's got a clear-cut frame-winning opportunity. Yeah, and that's always a problem when you uh, you play a tactical foul. You've got to make sure it's a killer foul. And where all the reds are in seconds. the open, once you break them open, I mean, that red does go. Well, Darren obviously thought it didn't go. So that's why he's covered the pocket again and locked Jason behind the yellow ball but he is in complete control of this frame now. It's good to see he's thinking straight because uh, he could have um, tried to go game then, pushed the boat out a little bit, but he owns both corner pockets that we spoke about before and he can go game whenever he wants to. And also noticeably, he's not shaking his head anymore. You, you alluded to buying himself a little time to settle in. I think that's exactly what's happened. Yeah, he is a very experienced player. Seconds. He's just settling down now and uh, He's a great tournament player. He doesn't normally uh, lose the, the plot too early in a match. He knows it's a long way to go. He just needed to settle down. I think Jason Twist has to come with a shot here. He's got to come with something that uh, can turn the tables because right now, Darren is in prime position to pluck this frame. Yeah, he just tried to make a little bit of a mess in the middle of the table, so if Darren does go a game, he could snooker himself behind one of those yellows, but... 
Darren is in total control here. So he's probably going to play the, the red onto the red into the corner. All onto the yellow. Perfect. Hopefully for Darren, he's on the top red to play the plant again. He's just having a look. You know, the interesting thing there, he's just nudged into that yellow and moved out of the way. So it's not hampering his, uh, his positioning on the getting on the black later in the frame, hopefully for him. So he's a little bit awkward, he's tucked up against that black if he's going to play that plant. Yeah, if he can't get the plant, he'll take them on the corner, which he's doing. He's going to roll this one in, and he's got the, the red into the centre. And he's perfect, because he just rolled through now, and yeah. the frame should be over. Play the other red to the bottom right, and... Uh, I mean, it's... He owned this frame almost as soon as he took control of that bottom left corner. Yeah, I mean, it all stemmed from the, the tactical foul from Twist, so it was a, a bad tactical error from Jason when he knocked the, the red in a little bit too early, in my opinion. Again, a very straight red that he's looking at into the center. And always a test of queuing. 30 seconds. Imperative that you strike that cue ball in the center. And for those of you that uh, are tuning in and you see this spotted cue ball for the first time, we will be showing you the spin these top players apply on that cue ball because it clearly illustrates exactly what they're doing to it. Well, if Darren Appleton needed a shot of confidence, he just got it. Dominant in that frame right, to get back to level pegging. 1-1 one, one with Jason Twist. And Darren Appleton has to be feeling a lot more comfortable now. We're going to take another look at it. And you can see, after the break, everything stayed together. It was almost like those balls had glue. Frame number three, Jason Twist and Darren Appleton locked in a barn burner here in Blackpool. And it's a dry Open break. Table. Not a lot of power in that break though. He's going for the red, he's going to play the red into the center. He just got one awkward Three one at the top of the play. table by the yellow. I'll be trying to get on that as soon as possible. Yeah, I think because he's got um, he's got that red that's a little bit further down, almost on the board line. Lee probably used that run through after potting that, and probably leave himself that red then, and to uh, leave himself an angle to get back down the table. Yeah, and the angle is all important because if he gets the wrong angle, he's going to be running into the yellow ball. So uh, he just needs to be a little bit careful on this finish. I think he's probably going to leave himself on that red now or promote one down. That's exactly what he's done. And the clever shot there is he's pushed the red down and he can play onto the, the red on the back rail and he's always got the one by the middle pocket next, which he can either take into the corner or into the middle. Very good shot, this one. We hearken back to the opening frame where both players missed fairly simple pots. And it was the fluke that really secured the win for Jason Twist. So he's had nothing. If you go back there, he's really had nothing with which to establish any sort of confidence, says Twist. That's right. And, and Darren's left himself a little bit straight on this road. That's why he's shaking his head again. He would like to a little, little bit more of an angle so he can stun up. He may have to just drop this in. And 30 seconds. Well, he's looking where, it, where the cue ball can be there with his tip of his cue. So he may screw back to roughly where his, his tip of his cue is now. Once again, the big shot in this frame has appeared, and it's down to Appleton to slot this difficult long red in. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he goes on with his cueing because that's actually a, a new cue that Darren's playing with. He's only had that a week, and he's actually re-tipped it for the TV stages. He's played with a, a flattish tip during the qualifying rounds and he's coming out onto the TV table and he's re-tipped that and yesterday I believe and that's all he's had. He's had about 24 hours to practice with that new tip. Yeah, Darren is one of the few players that can just put a new tip on and if he likes it he'll play with it, if he doesn't he'll rip it off and he'll just carry on. 
I remember playing him in a European semi-final once, his tip fell off. I thought that was a good result for me. He put a new tip on and cleared up the next three. I got a better story than that. Jimmy White used to uh, play his tip into good form and then he would flick it off and save it for the World Championships. That's an amazing story. This red looks quite tight, but he's played it well. Beautifully played. This is the sort of visit we've come to expect from Darren Appleton. Just like that, he has erased the one-frame deficit and gone into a one-frame lead. 2-1, he leads Jason Twist. From the tornado to break in frame number five, trailing by two. He would love to repay the favor. A break and finish to get back on course. Get a ball putted. That's the best split of the match so far. A good solid break. It's always been the trademark, really, of Jason's game, nominated. hasn't it, as we look at the lay of the land? He's always had a great break. Yeah, and he is one of the few players who has always had his hand on the table for breaking. Uh, say, and unlike Darren, in the last round where he took quite a bit of time to decide what he was going to do. Great he's, play. he's nominated Reds within a seconds of the balls coming to rest and uh, he's got down and he's decided what he's going to do already. And I uh, wouldn't uh, see any uh, danger in him not going out early. No, they're all um, all in the open. Just a matter of just keeping that cue ball under tight reins. One ball on the right hand side but there's two Reds near it. So there's no real problems here. Boy, what a record this man possesses in this World Championship. You know, you look at the last six years. I mean, he's won the event twice back in 2000 and 2002. And he's always at the business end. The biggest tournament in the world. And he sees the TV cameras each and every time. Yeah, I think he should start sponsoring it now, Jim. He's been there so often, took all the prize money. It's all about this uh, red on the right-hand side, on the, on the rail, he just needs to work his cube around and pick his route. I like the cube to travel further over there. Still in good position, but he would like to be a little bit further over. Yeah, I think he's what he's going to try and leave himself an angle on the one into the bottom right, and get either, and probably get behind it. No, he's going to cross the table to get behind it, this, this shot. Yeah, he didn't want to leave it till last because he got to get, out, get the cue ball out into the open, so that's why he stayed uh, on this side of the table to t take the redness in the bottom right-hand corner. Noticeable, too, his eyes have gotten larger. He almost looks like a rabid dog at times, Jason. He's, oh, Yellow balls in play. So, well, that looks like that turned out. It's drifted away from the pocket, right in the corner. Now, whether it was a finger mark or something on the table, I, I don't know. Well, I think it was slightly overcut, but... On most most of the time, you expect it to go in, but I think you see there, just because it got into the jaws, it's just drifted away, hasn't it, and hit the far jaw. Well, you can miss it on the near side, but you can't miss it on the far side. So if it has run away on him, the, the pocket takes no prisoners. Thirty seconds. That certainly caught me off guard. I mean, his eyes were starting to look like saucers, and you see that from Jason Twist. You know, when he starts to get near the finish line. Yeah, and I think he played it a little bit too soft as well, Jim. He should have played it a little bit more power, and uh, he wouldn't have given it a chance to roll off. Two bad misses from Jason Twist, and still early days in this match. But he's still in a good position, though. I mean, Darren's got a, a yellow down there by his hand. He's got to get behind and take that. He's got a hard shot down the rail. And Darren Appleton, I would say, is probably the greatest rails maker in our game. He's, he's fantastic at taking balls down the rail. Well, the real awkward yellow is the one nearest that bottom right corner. He doesn't have a lot of room to play into to land on that yellow. Yeah, I wouldn't like to second guess how he's going to get down to that one. But better to do it sooner rather than later, Lee. Yeah, it's just how do you get your cue ball down and then back out again for another yellow? That's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what route he takes. It could be off this yellow at the top now. Stunned down inside the black. He's just looking at that angle now. Just needs to miss the eight ball now and slide down in between those two reds and he'll be in perfect position. And the only thing that can go wrong here is if he landed dead straight. He's going to want to leave himself a little angle on that yellow nearest the bottom cushion as we look to be able to get the cue ball back towards the middle of the table. 
Yeah, but the position here is the key. Yeah, it's a little test of uh, how he's adapted to the conditions so seconds. far, this shot. That looks ideal. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> a great shot. The crowd certainly thinks so. Yeah, he couldn't have played a... Uh, if you put it with his hand there, Jim, it would have been closer there, wouldn't it? Well, that certainly wiped its feet there, Lee. I thought I was going to see that stay up. Yeah, yeah I wonder if Jason was half out of his chair. Yeah, you see the difference in the two. Jason rolled it and it went wide and it stayed over the pocket, but with a little bit of extra pace, made it go into the pocket. Still needs a good positional shot here. And this last yellow, and he looks like he's played that pretty much perfect. And as you say, he's a very good player of balls down rails or close to rails. This hasn't really got to do a lot here, Lee. This ball's in. That's my prediction. Took a little extra time, too. He knew the significance. Smacking his lips at this eight. And with its departure, the last four in a row have gone the way of the Dazzler. The number six seed leading 4-1 over the number two seed. So an interesting start to this one. 4-1 Darren Appleton at the moment. And uh, in your mind, Mick, what's the story so far? Well, Darren hasn't missed. He's missed one in the first frame, but other than that, he has not missed a ball. He's played fantastically well. Jason hasn't had much luck with the break. A uh, couple of times he's come up bare off the break and then ball probably rolled away a little bit there. But Darren's been fantastic. Hasn't missed anything. That's the story of the match. Darren's been too good. Well, certainly Jason twist off the break, but here's, here's another look at that. Very, very close. That was... It's a rare mistake, but... Yeah, I think it just moved away. Maybe a finger mark, as the commentators called at the time, but a little bit unlucky. I thought it was probably going in. He was... Just a bit stiff, I think. Thanks, Mick. Well, as you can see, they're about to break off again in our polka dot pool. Now we can see everything with that white ball at the moment, and we're about to see Darren break off. Back to our commentary. Tidy lead, 4-1 to Appleton. In the improveyourpool.com World 8-Ball Championships, will this be the year for Appleton to secure his first world title? Open table. Well, we had another close look at that red that was missed from Jason Twist, and uh, I have to concur with you, Sean. I, I, I believe that just turned a bit. Yeah, it definitely looked like uh, it's, we've seen it. it's turned at the end now. I say it, it's probably a finger mark it, uh, where the players have had their hand on the table and they've just roughed the nap just a slight bit. And uh, as a ball rolls across it, we've seen it happen many times, Lee, haven't we, where it'll just drift. Yeah, but there'll be no uh, consolation for Jason uh, to go four one behind. And, you know, it's not very kind to say that the only frame that Jason has won, he fluked a ball. Yeah, so the alarm bells will be going in his head at the moment. He needs to, to get this frame under, under his belt, and that was a, a routine finish, which uh, he didn't make. Yeah, he, need, he needs to win one with conviction and uh, get back on track. But at the moment, he's been bullied, and he likes to bully players when he's out there, Jason does, so uh, he needs to change the, the way the match is going. He's got one problem ball, certainly the one yellow that, uh, that presents itself. Seconds. And that's the one he's gone after right now, and he's on it. Terrific shot. Just matured that red out of the way. He's landed on the difficult yellow to the top left corner. And he's got a choice, actually, because he's freed the pocket. Another look. Yeah, but I think what you notice here, Jim, is that, that red that he just bumps into blocks the yellow going into the, the right-hand corner, so he may have to take it to the opposite corner. So he'll probably take the yellow into the top left-hand corner now and hold the cue ball roughly where the yellow is and play the plant. It's a big shot for Jason Twist. Yeah, he's, he's missed, missed it. Great ball to he play. is all amok right now, Jason. Uncharacteristic misses, unforced errors. And they are proving his undoing at this stage. Yeah, I mean, you see this, he's quite, quite away from the pocket. He's not even 
No, he's not even threatened it, has he? But movement. You noticed his head up off the queue as soon as he struck that white. Yeah, and it's always been the, the killer shot, the shot that's going to win in the frame. He's missing that important ball, which you cannot do at this level. <laughs> always that a sign of nerves, Lee. That's right, he's not settled. Another head shake comes from Jason Twist. And that's unusual. You don't normally see any emotion from Twisty. Whether he's winning, he could, you could, he could be winning 9-0, he could be losing 9-0, and you wouldn't have a clue. Look at his face. Yeah, he's under pressure now, and Darren's uh, turning the screw, and there's no reason why he can't take this finish out and this visit. Take the red into the centre and come down for the awkward one on the bottom rail. You know, if he secures this frame, that'll be another nail in Jason Twist's coffin. And you really can't see a way back for Twist if he does fall 5-1 down because it would be Appleton to break in the seventh frame. He's digging himself a big hole. 30 seconds. Yeah, you can't see he hasn't had the chances because he should be right in this match and he isn't. Yeah, going back to that long pot you've missed, I mean, those are the sort of shots that he was knocking in when he won that title in 2000 and 2002. You know, those, those long balls, as Lee said, they're the killer shots in frames, and that was what uh, secured him that title. And the way it's looking at the moment, it's going to be his Achilles heel in this match, and he's going to be uh, on an early uh, train ride back to Devon. Yeah, but Darren's still got to stay uh, with a professional attitude. He's still got to keep taking these chances and keeping the pressure on because the last thing he wants to do is let Jason off and let him get settled into this no, match. No, there'll be no sympathy cards mailed. 30 seconds. No, he, he won't want to get Jason's confidence up. He's got him well and truly on the back foot. Oh, he struck that as sweet as a nut. Hard of the pocket. He's gotten that cue ball back up towards the Reds, giving himself every chance. You can see that eight is only available to the bottom right corner. So in his mind now, he'll be weighing up the last red to be able to get the cue ball back into the position it is now. Yeah, that's dead right, Jim. All the top players pick the routine, the practice these shots all the time and the way to go out. And you can see he's just looking around now with the best way to get down onto that eight ball. 30 seconds. You won't want to leave the one on the right-hand side rail till the last if he can help it. Uh, stunning over when he just showed us he's going to put the cue ball. Interesting now on the cue ball, he was actually queuing right at one of the red dots there. And uh, I know that's caused a little bit of um, controversy this at this year's championships, Lee. Yeah, I mean, some of the players have adapted well, some of the players don't like it. It's, it's, it's just a matter of getting used to the, the, the heavier cue ball, but I think like the, the spots, you know, they, they do look different, but you just adapt to them eventually. He's left himself a little much to do here. If he tries to drop this into the right-hand center pocket, he's going to be very awkward on the last red, and that's assuming he gets this one. Yeah, but what he will be doing, Jim, is leaving himself an angle on that ball, and that's all important to get the cue ball out into the middle of the table. So you just need to roll that through. Tremendous shot. Again, made to look a lot easier than it was. But here's the big shot in this frame. As you said, Lee, he's got the ideal angle. He's just got to concern himself now with slotting this red down that cushion. Yeah, I think he would like the cue ball a little bit further down, though, Jim, because it looks like the, the, the cue ball probably will have to be left up by the middle pocket where he would like to come below the yellow. So he'll have to have a longer black than he would have liked. That was going to be the problem ball. And ouch! I'll bet that hurt. Yeah, he's, he's a little bit annoyed because he knew he should have had a better angle on that. I think he also knew that he had a chance to really kick Jason Twist in the teeth if he'd have knocked these in. But as a referee, Sean, do you ever warn a player for punching the table? It, it's one of those awkward ones, Lee. There's nothing actually says in the rules about if he was to actually move a ball, if he punched the table or kicked the table in any way and balls moved, then you could call a foul. It would be a serious foul, moving balls other than during a normal shot. But, but actually, knocking the table like that depends on the situation. You could warn them and you could potentially give loss of frame for sports, unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, I was just thinking of rule one, like you say, sportsmanlike conduct. But this yellow to get position on the eight and it should be one back for twist. Yeah, spinning that cue ball into ideal position. 
And what a laid off, let off, sorry for Jason Fantastic. Twist, but Chris. gratefully accepted to get back to 4-2. Dead and Appleton a quick to break. look, just to make sure that everything's two. touching. And happy with that. Center of the table certainly seems to be working best, and that's where he's gone. And with a 5-2 lead, Appleton breaks in frame eight. That might well be his best break. Yellow ball potted. Certainly from a success perspective, but he's got a couple awkward reds on the left if he does elect to go reds. Yeah, yellow's looked at the best balls, but he can't really get a, a good start. He has possibly got the option of taking the yellow in the yeah. bottom right-hand corner and moving the, the red off the yellow. I agree, Lee. I think the yellows have to be the ball here. So this shot to move the red away. Oh, and that is exactly what he didn't want. He's developed that red and he's knocked over the pocket and well, covered. In fairness, he's just played it a little too hard. Yeah, he has just played a little bit too hard. But I think there's still enough room to squeeze a yellow pass out. See the shot again here. He's contacted it full. He's probably going to want to just flick the side of it. He yeah, wanted it a little bit more on the right-hand side. And just look from the old red, Lee. I think you might be right. He might be able to squeeze the yellow past the red off the rail. A similar shot as we've seen players seem to have developed over the last couple of years where they're uh, squeezing balls past others using the rail yeah, I don't think there's any any real problem here he just needs to control where the reds going Jim so it's, it's a yellow in the bottom left hand corner off the rail and, and flip the red out he's just looking at it now making sure the red does come away so yellow off the, the cushion off the red and he's misjudged it Red balls in play. And Darren will be hoping there isn't a gap underneath <coughs> that yellow ball where Jason could play the, the red inside it. A little bit careless. He didn't really come over and have a good look at it. Not, uh, you know, just wait it up and, and take a little bit more time to be certain and, and more convicted in his effort. Yeah, he looked at it from the top side, but he never came to the bottom end of the table. Look, see where it was going to go there. No, exactly, Lee. You know, I mean, that shot required a lot more... I think in the way of care and caution that uh, Darren Appleton gave it. Well, Twist certainly having a good look at that red. And, uh, he's going to attack it straight away. Needs to be a good shot even if there is a gap. And he could double kiss the yellow in here. Foul two that's exactly what he's done. Very careless from Jason. He was stretching, I know, but that was always a danger. He needed to play with a little bit more care. Jason has not brought his A game to this quarter final. Now you'll see there on the replay, he actually cannon straight he, he into the yellow first, and it's just double kiss back, as you say, you'll see here again. You see how far he's stretching, it was a difficult shot. He didn't give it the care like Darren did in the shot before, but. Well, he had, he had two shots, he needs that yellow to stay in the open, it hasn't. Second visit. It's a reprieve for twist, I think. And here comes another punch. He's beating that table up. A little bit of frustration there from Darren. Well, he's slowly moving up the table. He'll be on the, he'll punch it on the top rail next time, I think, Jim. I don't know. I, you know, I would never like my opponent to see that, you know, I'm suffering. You know, if I'm suffering, I'm going to take that out of the venue. Well, he, with Darren, I mean, last year when he got beat, his cue got the, got the... His cue didn't survive? Second. No, it was over his knee after the match. But this time it's a table. He's got one visit left. It still goes, so he's not too bad. Yeah, I was going to say, thankfully, you can see that yellow. I didn't think he could. I'm surprised about Darren as well with this, this punch in the table business. He seems to say he was so relaxed beforehand. He said he, 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 wasn't, he didn't feel any pressure on himself at all. He just thought he could go out there, enjoy himself and, and play pool, and hopefully he'd come through. And he just seems to be beating himself up. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, the second time it was only a little tap. The first time he really thudded the table. Well, he played that well. That's a great shot. And I mean, if Darren Appleton is struggling, he's on the verge of going 6-2 in front. So how's that? Struggling. And you've taken 75% of the frames played to date. 
6-2 confirmed here in Blackpool. Appleton over Jason Twist. Ninth frame. Jason Twist to break. Jason Trail Twist must two. know, certainly as does everyone in attendance, that the time has come. He's got to stand up and be counted. He trails Darren Appleton 6-2 as he sets things off here in frame nine. Yeah, and he's got his Get cue ball in the middle of the table and he's made a ball. He's going to nominate the reds solely because he's got a red over the pocket. He's got another red in the same area which uh, he would like to be in the middle of the table, but he's going to have to negotiate it out at some point. Trailing 6-2 and, and given the alternating break format as we again take one more look at a successful Red break from Jason Twist. But with the alternating break format, Lee, it's a 6-2 deficit. It's going to be tough to overhaul. Yeah, you know that your opponent's always going to have a break Red and you can be in sat in your chair and not get a visit. But he has nominated the Reds and his destiny in this frame is in his own hands. So uh, he needs to bring his A game, Jim. It certainly looks like a good chance here, Lee, for him to get back into this match. Say a four-frame de deficit at the moment. He could reduce that to three. Hope Darren comes up dry. He gets back to the table quickly. Yeah, and he, he just needs to negotiate the the red in the bottom left-hand corner, which is just above those two yellow balls. So he's just having a look now. What he surely isn't thinking of playing the red inside the yellows. No, he won't be playing that. It'll be the red at the top right-hand corner. That's that's the right shot to play, Jason. Running the cue ball through off two cushions for the red on the right hand side rail. Good positional shot. Loaded that cue ball up with top spin there. Boy, clearly indicated with our spotted cue ball. One more look. Watch that cue ball rotate. Look at that. Yeah, it's almost stopped and then and restarted, hasn't it, Lee? It's an excellent shot from Jason there. Yeah. And this is a, an important shot for Jason. It, you now, it's just how he feels comfortable attacking, uh, tackling these two balls in the, the bottom left-hand corner. Well, you see that in the overhead. He's just left himself that angle to get down the table and he's just weighing up this the situation where he wants to leave that cue ball now, Lee. Yeah, he's, he's open. He's got a little bit of an angle and that's what he's played for so he can stun the cue ball down and take the red into the opposite corner. So he just needs a little angle on this. And he seems to have it. So he just stun the cue ball down and behind the red. Well, I think he's tried to flick the red out there. It's exactly he's to flick what he's trying out. to do, Sean. Exactly. And now he's got no choice. He's going he's gonna to be relying on luck a little because he's got to try and move it now. He's got the red over the pocket that he's going to be shooting, and he's going to be taking the cue ball into those yellows. He's going to have to hope he lands on that red. I, I Unless there's a three ball plant there. Well, he's got the, the, the combination shot, or he can just break the red out of the open and leave Darren behind the yellows and wait for a better shot next time. Your suggestion, Lee? Safety in mind. Bring the red out, lock the cue ball behind the yellows. 30 seconds. Here's the shot. He tried to develop spinning that cue ball, tried to flick that red into the open and didn't quite achieve the game plan. Yeah, I think he should have stunned it out, stunned behind it. But he's going to play the shot as I said. Stunned the, the red into the middle of the table and then the cue ball behind the yellows. Well, he just decided to leave the, the cue ball in the open. I can't understand that. Play. The thing about that shot, he seemed to have an awful long time on that shot, Lee. I mean, I certainly didn't hear a 30 second call. While, we, while you were talking there, but uh, certainly seemed to be a long time, that minute seemed. Yeah, sometimes when, it, when you've played a, a bad shot in the shot before, it seems a long time. Well, he really should have cleared up there and slotted another frame on his side of the score sheet, kept Darren Appleton in his chair. Appleton has to be relieved to even get a look in in this frame. Seconds. Yeah, I mean, I, and the shot he played, he was developing the red, but I think he could have done a lot better job with the cue ball. He could have got the cue ball right to the bottom rail and Ask more of a question of Darren where, where Darren can try and develop those two yellows or play a snooker at the top of the table or even put a yellow on top of the red. He's got more options than if the cue ball was on the bottom cushion. So he's probably going to just cover the red up. That's exactly what he's done. Very good shot. Covered both reds. <laughs> yep. He's got the safety to perfection. He's got the snooker. But that's down to Jason's poor shot before. If he, if he brings the red into the open 
Got to be careful of the in off here. Oh, he was going off two cushions. Well, it hasn't worked out too bad, really, has it? No, but I mean, Darren can just roll onto the yellow ball, Jim, and, and lock him in that bottom area, and he's going to be snookered again. Uh, would it be beneficial to try and clear that yet one yellow away from that top left corner as we look, just drawing the cue ball back to use the other yellow for cover? Well, if you do that, you open the area up, and Darren really doesn't want to do that. He wants to get that yellow right on top of the red. So later on, when he's got two shots, he can waste a visit and bring it out into the open. At the moment, he just wants to kill the frame. He doesn't want to try and win the frame. He wants to try and stop his opponent winning it, and then win the frame later on. Well, we did so see Darren there look like he was going to do a bit of mountaineering on the table, but he's decided against that, and he's asked for the spider. That's look like it's the extended spider that he's asked for. Dan the referee there, Rebel Barty, hands him the, the tackle. So we'll just be rolling this on top of the red and leaving the cue ball roughly where the yellow ball is, on the, on the bottom rail. He's stretched over, he's played that shot. Didn't make any difference at the rest or was on the table, did it, Sean? No, no, he's, he's perfectly entitled to do that. I mean, obviously, the only danger of, of doing that is if he was playing a shot where the ball would come back and hit that rest, then it would have been a foul. But uh, no, not a problem at all. That's not allowed in uh, American pool, I can tell you. You can't leave the rest on the table in American pool. It's, it's just deemed as being a, an instrument for measuring. Yeah, so you can't, can't allow it. It's good to see how the different rules change. About two visits. So uh, Jason's idea there was to get the yellow as close to that red as possible so it's hard to get the, r the, the yellow out because he knows he's in, in massive trouble. So um, he's just trying to buy himself a bit of time and hopefully when Darren tries to move the yellow out, he knocks his red ball in. So that's a clever little shot. But Darren's trying to just move it away here. He won't be moving it too far. Just be edging it away again. But in fairness, where Lee, or sorry, where uh, Jason was in complete control Second. here, Lee, one real good shot from Darren Appleton could open the door for a victory in this frame. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that Darren's a big favourite to win the frame. It's for Darren to lose the frame. Oh, he's played a fantastic shot there. He's not had to waste his visit. A waste of visit by uh, able to knock that yellow into the middle pocket. And now he's left himself an angle, probably to move that yellow out completely. As we see the shot again here. Yeah, and the good part about it is cue ball's right in the area because he's not the yellow on top of the red. He needed the cue ball in this area, so you just bring it out. Just needs to be careful he doesn't get the red. He's not the black to the rail, he won't be too Second happy with visit. that. But he's in good shape, he should uh, still take the finish out. As I said, he was one good shot away from taking control, and all of a sudden, he's just assumed the role of favourite in this ninth frame. Yeah, he's also had a little bit of the run of the balls there as well because he did contact that black and we saw it go to the right hand side. Could have quite easily found its way into the pocket, but uh, it hasn't. And now Down's got a great opportunity to open up a five frame lead in this race to nine. Yeah, he would have been desperately unlucky though, Sean, if the eight ball goes in. I'm sure we would have seen another punch at the table if the well, eight would have gone in. Well, that's what I'm talking about, Lee. He's had that little bit of run and that's what sometimes people need him. Big championship, big matches. Well, there's more matches to be played on this table. We need it. I don't want Darren uh, demolishing the table. It's just a simple stuff to do now. Just get the cue ball into the middle of the table after this shot. Yellow into the, the top right. Jason has to be sick. I mean, this, uh, this match is has just completely turned on him, even when it's looked like he should have clear sailing He's just not capitalising. Yeah, he's not turned up yet. It's not the Jason Twist that's won two world titles out here in the arena. Mistake. That was a mistake, and he's going to have to come with some kind of shot now. And is there a lifeline for Jason? There's definitely a lifeline, and that, again, is where the, the heavy cue balls Change, he, he, he's shaking his head. He's thinking, why is that reacted that way? Because it slid forward. So you see, the white goes forward and goes over there. Just the weight of it. He's still got a shot, though. Yeah, but the only shot he's got is into the bottom left corner as we look. Yeah, the cue ball's going away. <laughs> and no, and I mean, 
He's going to play well. Obviously, he's going to do very well to pocket the yellow, but he's going to do equally as well to land on the last. Yeah. Danger is there. The cue ball Bottom could right go. right corner. Sorry, Sean, for this yellow. It's a great shot. That's a fantastic shot there from Darren Appleton. And he's uh, left himself in good position here in his last yellow to get round for the black. Yeah, how do you spell relief? Great shot from Appleton. Now, I wonder if the memories of a missed eight into this very pocket, a similar looking shot, this is a slightly easier. Not just that, he's got that awkward queuing over, when he's leaning over the ball, over the pocket. Down it goes, and the Appleton Parade marches on. 7-2, just two away from a place in the semis. A very comfortable lead indeed. Five clear and two away from booking a date with Carl Morris. Appleton breaks in frame 10. And a ball straight into the middle pocket. Red ball pocket. But there's going to be an awful lot to be said before the outcome of this frame materializes. Yeah, as you can see, there's a, a red and a yellow, and a red and yellow at uh, the top area of the table, which Darren needs to negotiate. So it's two awkward areas. So it's be interesting to see which suit Darren nominates here, because uh, the red's in front of a yellow, and the yellow's in front of a red. 30 seconds. And given that he's pocketed a red off the break, if he elects to nominate reds, would that be his chosen suit? That's right. Because he's pocketed a red, he would stay on the red, so he could develop the area uh, roughly where he's uh, standing there. He can play the red inside the yellow and just break the ball open. Play. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Just promote the red in front of the yellow and take control of that pocket. That's good thing. Yellow thinking. balls in play. Got to be feeling pretty comfortable with the way this one has been progressing, even though there's been a few moments, certainly when uh, we were wondering whether the table would survive. But uh, in the end, Appleton looking full value. Yeah, and if you look at Jason's body language, you, you just don't think he's going to come back seconds. in this match, do you? And I don't know. Uh, I mean, I have to be honest with you, Lee. I haven't seen Jason fighting from the back end very often in matches, and I don't know whether he's got that sort of character when things are going awry. Does, can he hold himself together? Yeah, he played Gareth Potts last year in the, in the semi-final. I think he was 7-2 down, and uh, he got it back to 7-6, and all but for a little bit of bad luck, he could have got it to 7 all. So there's plenty of fight in the, the two-time world champion. Well, that's what we all wanted to hear. Now don't count that man out. But I think he needs to start believing himself. You know, he's a, he's a great player and um, he hasn't turned up for this match so far. Seconds. He's saying it's unusual for Jason at the TV stages, of, a, of particularly the World Championships. This has been his, uh, you know, it's almost been like his own backyard. I think you alluded earlier, he's taken plenty of prize money home from this event in the past. And uh, i say it's a, a completely Jason, different Jason twist that we've, uh, we've seen here before. That's a great oh, shot from Appleton, the long red. Yeah, very sound cueing too. Boy, he delivered that cue straight through that white. Oh, he's got the opportunity here to, to go game, and that's what he's looking at. He's just got to disturb the, the yellow and the red at the top area. So yeah. he'll need an angle at some point. Yeah, he's, he's looking to play in the one bottom left, and then left middle with an angle as he pointed his cue and disturb the red and the yellow. It doesn't really matter. He doesn't have to stay on that red because he's got the one over the top left-hand corner pocket as his safety ball. That's, that's correct. But he's just run a little bit further than he wanted to, perhaps, there. No, I think he's fine, Sean, because he can uh, either screw over off the bottom rail and flick into the yellow, or he can go straight into the yellow. He needed a little bit of an angle. I think we would have seen the head shake if he was out of position. Just wonder if it's not even a plant and if he was to hit it full ball, the yellow. No, you see, he's definitely pointing at the top rail where he wants to go. 
Yeah, the reason why he's doing that, he knows he's got more more room with the cue ball. He's a bigger target to hit. 30 seconds. And having the luxury of that red over the other corner. Oh, couldn't really have worked out any worse for Darren. It was dreadfully unlucky. I mean, he, he couldn't judge it to perfection how he's going to do because he was stunning coming off the back rail. But to be a lot behind his own ball, he can count himself as very unfortunate. Just wondering if it's actually touching it. Obviously, we've not seen that, but if it was, he'd be in a good position because he could just touch away to the rail and come back. I think he doesn't, judging by his uh, body language, he knows he's got to play at the, at the red ball. The other thing as well, if it had been touching, I'm sure you'd have heard the uh, referee, Revel Barty. Now you see there, it isn't touching. The referee is obliged to call touching ball when the cue ball is touching the, the player's own ball. But he's not when he's playing, touching his opponent's ball. Sorry, sorry, he was in no trouble really, he could clip off it and keep Jason locked behind that red ball. Again, he's massive favourite to take the next frame. One way traffic here. Is this one of those let the cue fly shots, Lee? Because really, you, I mean, you can't, can't play onto a yellow not to leave Darren something in the open. Yeah, a lot of the time you'll see players tapping up behind the ball and give, giving the deliberate foul away. You won't see it this time because he knows that he's got to try and make something happen. He needs to get a little bit seconds. fortunate. Like I say, let the cue ball fly a little bit. Um, knock a yellow over to the bottom left hand corner. <laughs> And, and given the two shots away, well, Darren could afford to waste one. Look at the position of, of his reds. Yeah, he could be coming off a side rail and try and pop the yellow into the middle here. Now he's, he's trying to come down and drop on behind that. That's a great shot. <laughs> How well has he judged that? To perfection. I didn't even think that escape was on. I thought the red took that side cushion away. I didn't believe that uh, he could play that shot when I suggested he may take the heave-ho. But obviously, and more importantly, Jason saw otherwise. Yeah, how well did he judge this off the two cushions? The perfect weight to lock Darren this time behind the yellow ball. I mean, if he, if he can... Well, he's looking for a gap there. Yeah, he wants to try and softly masse between those yellows to try and flick that red into the corner. And uh, again, Lee, with a little heavier cue ball here, the masse shot may not react exactly the way Darren has been accustomed to. Yeah, you'd think it would throw a little bit further wide, wouldn't you? <laughs> Judge to perfection. And that's just a fantastic shot there from Darren Appleton. As you say, that masse shot the heavier ball was so much more difficult. But what he did do very well, he played the cue ball into the rail and let the side flick into the red, so it made it so it was like probably a 40% chance of potting it. It's like he's stretching here. A little bit awkward in the corner pocket. Yeah, he's not the tallest of players down, so he is going to have to stretch a little bit. But he should be OK, there's no real problem. It looks to be perfect. Obviously doesn't have to do anything other than clearing the yellows to leave that black available. This is the shot again for Darren Appleton to get to the hill. Yeah, I think I'll just draw this one back, Jim, into the middle of the table. <laughs> Superb shot making, laying the foundation for Appleton in this frame. Down goes the eight, it's a familiar song. He's won the last four on the spin. Eight, two, Appleton over twist. Yeah, and for Jason Twist, I'm sure it's been sung by Dire Straits because that's what he's in. Well, if nothing else, Jason can throw this one away, let that Q arm go free now because very few would expect him to win seven in a row and snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's uh, going to come back in this match, unfortunately. He's um, ju just judging by his body language. Yeah, almost even a look of resignation there, isn't there? That's right. Eleventh frame, Jason Twist to break. Trails 8-2. <coughs> Nothing to lose now for Jason Twist. He trails 8-2. In frame number 11, 
and nothing down. And Jason Open knows title. it has not been his day. This won't go into the memory banks, this one. Yeah, a little wry grin as well, as if to say, well, that just sums up this match for me. No balls off the break. I've not really played well. And he probably thinks that's his last shot in the tournament. But he, I'm sorry, Sean. I was going to say, he's a great competitor, isn't he? I mean, you'll still see him in the bar having a drink afterwards. That's Jason. No doubt he'll be yeah. in the bar. If he wins or loses, he's in the bar. 30 seconds. Great balls in play. Just wonder, Lee, is... Uh, Darren's had a slight edge in, in before this match, really, in the fact that he's not played for Team England this year, has he? He's dropped out of the England setup, but Jason is the old stalwart of the team, along with Keith Brewer. Seems to have been in that England team forever, and he's been playing in the team matches as well during his championships. Yeah, I know Mick and Darren have dropped out of the team this year through their own choice. Um, they were highly enough in the rankings, but he decided to stay out of the team, and he did say that he thought it had benefited him because he could focus on the singles. Well, this is certainly the beginning of the end as far as Jason Twist's run at a third world title. But Darren Appleton looking for his first and almost guaranteed a spot in the semifinals. And he will face Carl Morris. He's three shots away from trying to take out another world title holder. Yeah, it's been a good performance from Darren. He's not looked in trouble. A couple of head shakes, but that was all. One-way traffic in favor of Darren Appleton. The semi-final lineup is complete. Mark Selby will oppose Chris Melling, and Carl Morris will be up against that man. The victor here today, Darren Appleton. A convincing win, 9-2 over Jason Twist. Excellent stuff then by Darren Appleton, no question about it. He started a little bit unsteadily, shaking his head, not happy with his game, but then he really got into the vein and never looked back. And poor old Jason Twist really couldn't do anything much more about it, could he, Mick? Oh, he was fantastic, John. He probably only missed three or four balls for the whole match. Chase, I don't think he had, as I said earlier, he didn't seem to have much luck. A couple of things went wrong here and there, but... Uh Jeez, Darren was fantastic. It's going to be hard to beat. I was going to say, with that kind of form, you, you wouldn't bet against him actually taking the title this year. Well, he's got Carl Morris in the second semi um, at a later date, and Carl will be tough. He plays a few games with people's minds, and I think Darren wants this desperately. So Carl will be slowing him down and really playing him very hard. But on that form, Darren's not missing much. He's going to be, he'll, I think he'll probably get Carl. A hard, tough one to predict, but he'll get close. Well, that's interesting. The two players who are up against each other in that semi-final having a quick chat. So, uh, interesting. Uh, good friends off the, off, the, uh, off the bays, but I'm sure when it gets down to the nitty-gritty of it, they are going to be going at it hammer and tong. Let's take a look at the results of the quarterfinals as they panned out. And as you see, Mark Selby through. He was an interested uh, watcher in that one as well. 9-4, his game. Uh, Chris Melling is in there too. 9-8, he won. Carl Morris, who you just saw there, 9-7 over Tom Ford. And Jason Twist, really not in it. The tornado not blowing in at all. Darren Appleton winning that 9-2. And that means that the semi-finals look like this. Chris Melling will take on Mark Selby. That could be a real cracking matchup between those two. The snooker man and the absolute out-and-out -out pool man. Darren Appleton up against Carl Morris. And as you said, Carl Morris will be trying all his tricks. Darren, it's, as we've seen, can be caught out, can be sort of put off, if you like. I think that could be a problem for him. He's got to keep calm and keep his head. Yeah, Darren keeps cool. He'll be hard to beat. I think um, Carl will... I think he was probably trying already just then. But uh, he'll try and play a few mind games and he'll... But, hey, don't get me wrong, Carl's a fantastic player at the same time. Doesn't miss much, has great brain power on the eight-ball table, works very hard for his frames. I think Tar Darren's just not missing much. If he plays, keeps in his groove, keeps his mind strong, he'll win that match, I think. OK, thanks for joining us, Mick Delahunty. And, of course, it's all to play for yet here in the eight-ball pool championships. But, definitely, the man they call Dynamite Darren has ignited the fuse. He's through to the semis. We'll see you next time from Blackpool.